Hello drone racers, this is the Stack X F4 flight controller with VTX HD camera, FPV camera, DVR, 4-in-1 ESC, and a partridge in a pear tree. And it came packaged in this pretty nice little box. So I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat. Is this a run cam split killer? And the answer is, I have no idea. But it looks really nice, so I'm going to show you what comes in the box, what I'm planning on doing with it, some of the pros and cons I've seen about it already, and then I will take my time putting it all together so we can get a proper review out of it with DVR footage and all of that kind of fun stuff. But it just showed up and I was really excited to look at it. First, the accessories, and probably the most important one, it does come with instructions. There's been a really bad habit of devices not coming with instructions recently. This comes with six pages of instructions that lays out all the details really well and gives you all the stats and confirms it will support success. Holy cow. What kind of flight controller it is? It's a Fish Drone F4. I've never heard of that. But it is an F4. It's a standard stack. It does show SBUS and FRSKI smart ports. So there's a built-in telemetry port. This does a really good job of laying out where all the connections are. And really drone manufacturers, this is all I'm asking for. This is just printed color paper, but it details what all the parts are for and so many people are lacking that. It shows you what you have to bridge in order to get the different connections in place, including the specifics depending on what receiver you have. So here I'll be using an S bus and this is the default that it comes from the factory, but it shows you what UARTs to use, what pins are bridged. So you get signal inverters if you have a PPM connection or if you use a DSM connection. There's also a FlySky S bus receiver instructions and then even uh, smart port telemetry configurations and it does a really good job of showing you exactly how to get it set up. It gives you nice details on how to change the VTX power and band which you do in the command line. There's some other options for that also which it shows you. Now in this case it, there's not a UART command it's a, a PWM connection so it requires a PWM connection and then you can switch it to switch the uh, recordings on and off. So you can control the DVR from your radio, which is kind of nice. Even nicer than that is the fact that they detail it all out for you here in this manual. I'm really happy it came with that. So you also get standoffs and then for connections. I thought this was interesting. They give you both a SMA and an RP SMA cable. So whichever one you prefer, they give you some 14 gauge wire, which is probably adequate in most cases. And then some wire protector to go around the power connections itself. So then we have the most important part, the camera and the stack itself. So it does come pre-assembled and everything is wired and all ready to go. So it should be, as long as you have the right frame, incredibly easy to mount and have ready to go. The cables were already in place. The servo cable was even already on. So if I wanna connect up one of my XM pluses that's already wired for this, it, all I have to do is plug it in. It does say in the manual, it's already set and wired for a free sky essentially. It's ready for S bus connection. So for me, that's great. It's all ready to go. Top we have the DVR and the camera cable. So you can see the SD card is pointing in the back, which it's probably okay, I think I'd rather have it in the side, so it could be a little difficult to get to that sometimes, depending on how your frame lays out. A lot of this is making sure you pick the right frame for it, which I'm not sure I've done yet. In the middle we have the flight controller and everything is all wired up for OSD and power is set. The solder pads here have voltage going through to the flight controller to be able to read the voltage. We also have the connections for the ESC. The ESC 4-in-1 is on the bottom here. And then the camera, which is honestly the biggest concern that I have, and I'm trying not to pull this cord here as I'm handling it. This camera is really, really long, and I found already that that's a problem. There's three mounting holes, which is convenient, but they're all the way at the front. I'd rather have them give me a set in the front and the back because this is making it so I can't mount it in the frame that I had in mind. This camera is the same width as what you'll have in a run cam split. It's 22 millimeters wide. So what I did was I went and looked up some run cam split printable adapters and I found one and that's what I'm going to use with my frame. This is the frame I picked for it initially. This is a real ACC 210 stretch frame, which I thought would be really nice to make it lightweight. Once I looked at where the screw connectors are for the camera, I saw there was a problem because the screw mount for the camera is right there. And if I mount the camera lined up with that, it goes right where the stack goes. The camera would end up going in the same position as the stack, which obviously isn't going to work. So I've had to find a way to extend this out and I'm not sure if it's going to work yet or not. So what I did is I printed some mounts that I found on Thingiverse. I'll link these down below. And these are for the run cam split, but it would connect up 
extend the camera forward just far enough that I think it will mount. The question is, is it gonna hit the propellers? So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the camera and we're gonna take a look. So there, now it's uh, screwed on both sides. I had to trim just a little bit because I know it won't fit and I can fix this in printing. This is just kind of a rough draft to see if it's gonna work at all. But then if I stick this in here and line this up with where the holes are on this frame, there we go, it goes right there and I can hold it in with the frame. And if I grab a propeller, oh, see I can see this frame is simply not gonna work. Because if I hold that over the motor, with how far forward this camera is sticking, it's, it's just not gonna work. Once I give it a lot of camera angle, it might just clear. Okay, there we go. I threw some screws in just to make sure everything was all lined up right. And once I put a motor in here, I'm just gonna be hitting the camera. That is simply not gonna work in this frame. So. This frame is not gonna work. So that's gonna be the big thing. If you're looking at getting one of these, that's a problem. You have to make sure you have enough clearance. And I was actually looking at something smaller or I would have to switch to smaller props, four inch props on this. And I don't really wanna do that. The other concern that I had that I had to look at was whether the stack itself would fit. Cause once I put the top on here, it's really close, but that doesn't leave room for any space on the bottom. To help with that, it does come with a, to help with that, it does come with a bunch of additional spacers, and these spacers are smaller than the ones that are installed. So you can actually reduce the height of the stack if you need to by replacing all of the spacers all around with shorter ones. So that will help too if you have uh, height considerations because the stack is pretty darn tall. So for me, I was hoping to have this all flying tonight and it's just not gonna work out because this frame isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to grab something different. I have a Martian 2 frame on the way and I would expect that to work, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the layout here. The camera is the biggest thing you have to look at. If you want to try one of these, because for the price, you can get this right at $100. You have the frame and the motors and the stack and you're done. That's everything that you need. Oh, and a receiver. While we're at it, I was looking for a lightweight motor. So I got these uh, T-Motor Air 40s, 2450 KV. I thought that would be a really nice compromise and they're nice and short and very lightweight. I was going for a lightweight build here because the stack doesn't weigh very much to get everything all in place and have it done with DVR and not have to have an HD camera. It's really, really nice. One thing I was happy about with these motors is they had long enough wires that I was gonna be able to connect it and not have to uh, extend them. I've had to do that a couple times and it's really annoying. And they were barely more expensive than Racer Stars, but I won't be using those tonight. So if you were looking at buying one of these stacks, hopefully you found this useful and it will make it easier for you to know what to go with it. Whether the quality is there, I don't know. I'm going to have to wait just a little bit longer to find out myself. So until next time, remember the quest for the perfect frame for the Isheen Stack X continues.